Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Julie and you are currently watching the Awkward Space Solution series. Today's video wasn't a part of my original list of topics, but so many of you wrote in. You all wanted to find solutions for your challenging entryway. We'll be discussing how to resolve all of your key issues and show examples on how you can create an entryway that is functional, inviting, stylish, and most importantly, gives guests a glimpse into your story and space. Here are the most common dilemmas. No entryway where you walk into an open plan space. A tiny entry with a teeny tiny wall space. An entryway with multiple passages into other rooms. An entryway with multiple doors, be it a hall closet, a bedroom door, a bathroom door. Those long narrow hallways or entryways that are met with a stairwell and a long hall leading to another area, and those large empty foyers that you just don't know how to furnish. Yes, there are people out there with too much space and you're just as stumped as those with teeny tiny spaces. Let's start with the basics of an entryway and why you should have one in your home. Not every home is blessed with these huge, gigantic foyers that become a statement and a showroom in itself and really gives you a glimpse into what you can expect with the rest of the home. So why do you need a functional entry? You need a space to land upon entering the home, a place for your daily essentials like your keys, your wallet, your purse, your coat, Whatever you need to streamline your routine is a win in my design book. If you enter to the garage, you need two landing zones. The entry by the front door will be for guests. And you'll also need a functional valet at the garage for you and your family. Understanding your needs is essential to your entryway's success. Let's take a look at all of the different challenges that you face and come up with easy solutions when it comes to creating an entryway when the space isn't so obvious. Let's first dive into those homes with no entryways. Essentially, there's no visible walls in front of you or beside you except the wall that shares the entry door. So you walk into an open space design whether or not it's on your left or your right. If you're lucky, you have a tiny little bit of wall space where you can flank a console, a mirror, some artwork, and your valet. Think about using furniture pieces to create an entry passageway. This could be the back of a sofa. It could be a small, slim console. You can even build out some walls like a pony wall or a bench to help demarcate space. If you have a wall opposite the entry door, 
You can always source a slim console or a sofa table and use the wall that shares the entry door for your coats, hats, and bags. Measure the size of the space available and source a console to fit proportionally to the space. So you have a teeny tiny entryway with teeny tiny walls to match. Maybe you don't even have any wall space and just a little corner to mess around with. Here are some solutions for you to address these tiny entries. I cannot stress how important measuring is for your space. You need to be able to measure any space that you have, be it a wall or corner. And find a furniture piece or even custom build one that would fit that space precisely. You could float a console, you could float a cabinet, you can even install a little rail and hang hooks if you really lack some space. There are so many ways to personalize this teeny tiny entryway and understanding your needs first is essential to the success of your design. You may have an entryway with multiple passages. You walk through the front door and there's an opening to a living room, opening to a hallway, maybe even an opening to the stairwell. Here's how you can address that entryway. Use a small corner in between two walls to create a statement entry. If you don't have any wall space or any corner depth, consider placing the entry table into the first room that you enter in. A landing zone could be as simple as a potted plant and a small little credenza. Maybe instead of doors and passages, you have an entry right into a stairwell landing. You may have stairs that go directly up. You may have stairs that go directly down. Pretty much, you don't have any entryway where you can make a grand statement. Here are some ways to help you resolve that. Try hanging a slim coat rack on the wall and anchoring that space with a pair of stylish boots and a little potted urn. If you have a little niche, you could also build out a little custom mudroom. The space doesn't have to be much, really just enough for you to put your shoes on and off and a place to hang your bags.
Think about ways that you can create a creative and functional space with just the bare essentials. You might have a larger entryway that's met with one set of stairs instead. Here's what you can do. You can use the wall space just beyond the entry to create a comfortable landing zone. Maybe place a long bench on the solid wall and flank the opposite wall by the stairwell with a slim console. You could also use a tiny wall space beside the stairs to make a statement. If you have a huge foyer in the center of a sweeping staircase, try a round table instead. I love how fresh and modern these little vignettes look on an angled stair wall. If you have a space that you walk into an open plan concept with a stairwell in front of you, you could also create an entryway landing space just beyond the stairs. Let's talk about that long, narrow hallway, which really is like one of my dreams to have when you walk into this massive home. If you're blessed with this long hallway with beautiful light streaming through on an entire elevation of windows, I mean, I'm jealous. It's really the perfect way to create a statement in the entry of your home. If instead you have this long, narrow hallway with just wall space to use, that is precisely how you can take advantage of all of that storage space. Use the walls. You can install a tiny floating shelf anchored with a big round mirror you could have a slim shelf with hairpin legs and a coat rack above it. You can even fabricate a custom mudroom with coat hooks, storage bins, and even shelving above for additional storage space. Don't let that long narrow hallway deter you from injecting your personality, style, and add some functionality to the space. I was flipping through Ikea's catalog and I found so many really cool, slim storage units that you could use to affix right on the wall of those narrow hallways. They barely take up any space. They look modern, chic, clean, and functional. We don't all have it, but let's talk about those large empty foyers that you just don't know how to fill. The solution is to source a beautiful piece of furniture that becomes a statement in itself.
I always get these questions about what to style at an entryway. And while there are some key guidelines, that's not really a decision that I can make for you. It's something that you have to discern yourself once you figure out how you live, your needs, how you operate on a day-to-day -day routine. Essentially, what does it take for you to get in and out of the house in record time? My first tip is to always inject that small entryway with tons of style. You could use wall-to-wall -wall covering, bold colors, vibrant graphics, a beautiful light fixture, If you have a simple console table, think about elevating the walls behind it. You might try panel molding, you might try lacquered walls, you might even try a big piece of statement artwork. Here's your chance to get creative and show a little personality. Today's case studies come from my own portfolio. These are my own interior design projects that I've completed in the past and they have a variety of different entryway looks. Let's start with Mona Van's studio high-rise apartment in the heart of Hollywood. You walk into this space and you're immediately met with the kitchen on the right and a landing space on the left. Before the landing space was not used at all. I mean, she had a trash can here. She kind of had her bag set on the floor. I felt like there's so much potential here for us to do a little bit more with this space. The solution was to have a small valet area, in this case, a little side table that fit perfectly within the left corner of this wall. The right side of the wall is a little bit larger. I wanted it to be a functional space. I mean, somewhere where she can show off her personality, kind of drop off her purse, her bags, and maybe even become a backdrop for some of her filming videos. Here's what I would change now. On the left side, you can see that we had that little marble and brass table. And while it fit the space pretty perfectly, it had the same function as a bookshelf on the right. So now I would probably get rid of that little side table. I would definitely get rid of that faux plant, move her little valet bowl where she kind of throws her keys, her wallet over to the bookshelf and probably use this space with a hook. I would want to free the floor space up so it doesn't feel too heavy. Moving on to this Laguna Hills bungalow. The clients were a young couple, no kids, just a couple of dogs. And when they bought this home, it was just one blank slate. It had beautiful bones. You open the front door, you're on a landing and you're met with a stairwell in front of you. Your line of sight goes directly into the kitchen and to the right of you is a sunken living room. So essentially you walk into a platform. We needed to create a functional entryway here but the clients were insistent that they didn't need much. I had suggested to put this teeny tiny side table. It was really discreet. It was the perfect place for just some keys and a wallet. The living space is backed up by the sectional, which creates a natural passageway into the rest of the home. I also source a pair of sculptural wood nesting tables to the side of the sectional for additional storage. Their minimal entryway became a place just to simply drop off a set of keys and kind of check themselves out as they come in and out of the house. You may remember my La Crescenta project. It was a single family home for a growing family. The couple had a young child and this essentially was their starter home. You open the front door and right in front of you is a stairwell leading down into the basement.
When you turn to the right, it's an open plan space. We had to fit a living space in here, a dining room, and the kitchen. The first look into the space, you'll know that we absolutely had to create a functional entryway of some sort. I didn't want to take any space away from the living room because it was already pretty small. Their wish list for an entryway was a functional valet station. This was a space for them to house their keys, their wallets, their sunglasses, additional storage space. I mean, they have a toddler crawling around, so we needed to kind of hide his toys in the bins. And they wanted a place to take their shoes on and off. I measured the space, and after figuring out how much room we had for the dining table and chairs, we had a space next to the stair railing for a console and matching upholstered benches with storage underneath. Even though this space may look a little bit crowded, it really works for this family. There was enough space to walk in and around the dining furniture, and those upholstered ottomans also doubled as makeshift chairs when they had additional guests. I mean, the only thing I would probably change about this space is that I would probably look for a slimmer console. The clearance and passageways that you have to walk around the furniture is really important. I mean, I feel like the more clearance and passageway you have, the larger the space is going to look. But I get it, you need the space to function according to your storage and daily needs. Lastly, we have Casa Hacienda. This was the custom home that I designed in Hacienda Heights. And I mean, clearly we had the advantage from the get go. It was a custom home. We built it from the ground up. I was able to specify exactly what I wanted in this foyer. I wanted a wow space these custom wrought iron entry doors. You walk into the space and there's really no delineation of space. You're met with this beautiful custom light, coved ceilings where there really are no angled walls. I mean, this space is just incredible. When you have a large entryway to deal with, what you're essentially looking for is a way to make it feel a little bit more intimate and cozy. I did that by centering a round table in the middle of the space. Why round? So there's no hard edges for you to bump into and the space feels more cozy, warmer, and inviting. I wanted the space to make more of a statement, so I also flanked both adjacent walls with symmetrical wall sconces. The result was a custom and classic look that could evolve with the family over time. It's important to revisit your past designs to see how you can improve it. I am all about efficiency and functionality and can sometimes beat myself up when I haven't found a better way to do something. Allow yourself to evolve and allow the home to reveal its needs to you. As you grow, your home will grow, your needs will change, and it's really important to be open to those changes along the way. That is how you will achieve a space that rises up to greet you instead of feeling overwhelmed and discouraged when it comes to a space that's not functional or inviting. I hope after watching this video, you see the importance of creating a beautiful and functional entryway in your home. Now you see that there's really no excuse for not creating an entryway that you love to come home to. A long narrow hallway upon the entry, take advantage of all of that vertical wall space and mountain hooks and install floating shelves. No entry? Use furniture to help you create an entryway and a landing space. Not sure how to style it? Grab out a pen and paper and write down everything that you need to get in and out of the door. Is it your keys, your wallet, your purse, your coat, your hat, your sunglasses, like everything guys. Just write it all down and then figure out the furniture solutions that will help support your needs. If you like this type of content and you are enjoying the Awkward Space Solution series so far, please give this video a thumbs up. Comment below and let me know if you have any awkward entries that I did not address in this video. But before you comment, I have to tell you, make sure you understand your space. Measure it out, see what your challenges are, see if you can come up with a solution yourself first. You'll never learn if you don't try it yourself and these tips definitely won't resonate if I just tell you what to do. So let me know in the comments how I can help you. Please share this video and this series with anyone you know who's struggling with their awkward space. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.